Hello and welcome to another episode of my quest system series. In the last one we set up our basic health, mana and experience, so our stat system, which means that now we can start to work on our actual skill actors and all the data that we need for that. In this video we will just start with some very basic preparation work, so adding all the enums and structures that we'll need, as well as setting up basic elements, weaknesses and resistances for now. The first thing I would like to show you here is that in our textures folder you will see that I imported a new texture called skill border and set compression and texture group to UI. Also I created two new subfolders here, one for skills, so here you can have all the skill icons that we will use for now and one for elements. All of them are set to be used on UI and the download link for that will be in the description as always. But one thing that's really important here is that I'm not an artist, so I didn't draw those icons, elements and skills myself, which means that unfortunately you are not able to use them if you are trying to release your project to the public, but just as some placeholders they will do fine. Alright, first off let's go to our blueprints, create a new folder here called skill actors, open that up new blueprint class of the type actor which we will call master underscore skill so we've got that created won't implement it yet probably in the next episode and then let's go to our enums and let's add a new blueprint enumeration called e underscore target types so this will list all of the ways you can cast spells let's add some here so for the first one I will just type in a slash, so if it's something else then the ones that will be listed now we will use that. For example if it's a spell that just teleports you back to your base you could use this because that won't have a target really. Then we will have self for buffs and so on and also selected enemy just probably well known from most MMORPGs where you can just select an enemy with your mouse, hit a button and the spell will always hit the enemy you selected. Then we've got selected area for AOE effects as well as area around self for auras and explosions and finally there is missile if you want to use that. So just shooting in a line and see whether it hits anything. Save that and close our E target types. Let's just hit Control W on that enum to create another one, which we will call E underscore damage types now. So in what way can we deal damage? We only need three entries. First one will be magical damage. That will be blocked by magical resistance. Then we have physical damage, this one is lowered by armor. And finally absolute damage that is blocked by neither magical resistance nor armor. So you, you will always deal the exact amount of damage that is put in your skill description. Save and close it. And the last enum that we need here is called E underscore effectiveness and we will use that to define how our different elements will interact with each other so add three elements here first entry here is just effective so neither not effective nor super effective then we've got super effective for example if you shoot a fireball at an ice enemy that will be super effective and finally not effective for example, if you try to freeze burning enemy. Save and close our E underscore effectiveness. And let's go to our blueprints. Create a new folder here for elements. Open that up. New blueprint class type actor called master underscore element. Won't do anything in here yet, just to have that created. Then you need to go back to your blueprint structures and here we will create a new structure called s underscore element info. So 
so what kind of variables do all of our elements share and what we can enter here is first a name which will be a basic text then we've got the icon which is a texture 2d reference also some kind of color that we can later use to define our text in the widgets make that a linear color and make the default white with an alpha of one create a new variable now we've got the weaknesses and the weaknesses will be master element classes so an array create a new variable of the same type and this will be resistances right save and close the s underscore element info now because we can go back to our elements master element new variable element info which will be an s underscore element info pile and save and now we need to create some child classes first one will be element underscore arcane hit control w to duplicate that and this will be arc element underscore fire do that once more element underscore ice and element underscore leaf if you want to feel free to add any other element you can think of but i will just do those four for now and once we've got them created we can set up the values so let's do it arcane first open up the element info name will be arcane icon will be element arcane as well and for the color we will need something in between purple and blue maybe so it matches the color of our icon yeah, that seems okay weaknesses so we've only do one weakness for each element and here this will be leaf and arcane is resistant to fire by the way feel free to set it up in a different way that's just some examples that i will use okay once we've got that close it let's do the next one so fire will be called fire icon will be element fire and the color of course something like an orange red somewhere in between that the weakness of fire is arcane and it's resistant to ice. Let's go ahead with ice. So the name is ice. Icon element underscore ice. Color something like a very light blue. It has one weakness, which is fire, obviously, and it's resistant to leaf attacks. Compile and save. Last one we need to do here is leaf. So name is leaf, icon will be element underscore leaf and the color something like green, slightly darker so it matches the color of the icon. It is weak to fire attacks but resistant to ice. Pile and save and that's it for our basic elemental setup. Later in this series I will show you how you can actually have that make a difference in damage calculation based on whether they are super effective or not but that's something for maybe in two episodes something like that let's go back to our structures because we need some more so blueprint structure and this will be called s underscore skill stage so for every skill we have an array of possible stages that it can reach so you can level up your skills by spending skill points on it and in our s underscore skill stage we need to keep track of all the variables of our skills that may change when you level up this skill first off for every stage we would need something like a required level that our player has to be in order to level up that's an integer and required skills 
so all of the other skills you need to have before unlocking this stage and that will be a master skill class array after that we can use an override icon for example let's say you have a fireball and when you level it up you shoot three at once you could have the icon change to indicate that this will be a single variable and a texture 2d reference type we have the range of the spell which is a float then we have the damage obviously also a float as well as the damage type this will not be a float but an e underscore damage type so the enum we just created after that we have the critical chance That's an integer. We will also have that influence our damage calculation. Then there is the cooldown, which will be a float. Casting time, also a float. The area radius, which will be a float as well. And another float called the missile speed. Then we need the mana cost can be an integer as well as the damage DMG per tick so we also have the ability to implement dots which stands for damage over time damage per tick will be float and we've got the tick interval which will also be a float as well as an integer called accuracy And let's also add a new variable called duration that will be a float and we will move that up. So for example you could say that if you do a damage over time on stage 1 that only will last 3 seconds but if you level it up maybe 5 so we'll need that duration then. Save and close the s underscore skill stage. And then there's only one structure left so let's also create this called s underscore skill info open that up first one name kind of obvious let's make that a text name of a spell then we have the icon of our spell which will be a texture 2d reference afterwards the description being a text then the element and that will be a master element class afterwards we've got the target this is an e underscore target types and finally we need the stages and that will be an s underscore skill stage array save this Close it, go to our blueprints, skill actors, master skill, add a variable here, skill info, which will be an s underscore skill info, pound save. And we will also add another variable called current stage index. Being an integer, let's put that in a category that we will just call runtime. So this can be accessed and modified during our game. The skill info is basically static. And let's make a little helper function here called get current stage. It will be a pure function. And what we do here is get the skill info, break it, and let's only show the stages. Then get from that at the current stage index and we will add a return node and one thing I'd like to show you here is if you just drag that as skill stage structure reference onto your return node it will automatically add an output for you which we can just call return or out and then connect our execution pin maybe also add a category for that called helper functions enter and we've got that compile save again and that's basically everything we need
for the preparation work of our master skill actor. In the next episode we will add some more functionality here and maybe also already touch adding a skill slot widget. Alright, see you in the next episode.